What's up, guys? Welcome to Straight From The Chest. I'm your host, Justin Groth. Guys, thank you for giving me your listening ear this time. Welcome those who are new. Thank you for those who have been with me for any length of time. We're on episode, I think this is 164. To many people in the podcast community, that's not a whole lot, but it seems like a lot to me. And I've covered so much ground in these 164 episodes or 163. And sometimes, sometimes I'm not plagued with certain things to say or I'm not, I'm not just overwhelmed with certain things to express to you because one thing about me is I don't want to repeat or relive certain topics. And even though I know that I do, and some of you that are listening that have listened to other episodes are thinking, are thinking right now, you've talked about the same thing multiple times and you're definitely right. And I, and the reason why I do that, I think is that I believe that it bears revisiting and there are so many things that are just perpetual in our lives and that need to be revisited on a daily basis sometimes. And sometimes the tonality behind certain topics is different. But realistically, the underlining, you know, the underlining demonstrative is all the same. And really, there are only a few things that you need to understand in this life to make it through. And I think we should go through those. One of them is to not worry because realistically, you don't have the plan, you don't know the blueprint, and even if you did, you'd probably mess it up. So it's a good thing that you don't have the plan. We can agree on that. You evolve and you change and you revolutionize yourself with your, with your just your daily living and, and years that go by. I mean, you're constantly evolving. You may not even know it, but you may meet somebody that takes you to a new level and causes you to evolve in the process. And that person's relationship or friendship maybe only lasted six, seven, eight months. So we're constantly changing. We have to understand that. And, that, and for that reason, we can't be the narrator here. We just, we shouldn't be. The other thing is, you're far stronger than you understand. And the only way to really delve into that strength component is to manufacture disciplines and routines in your life that cause you to voluntarily reach new levels. And the only way that you do that is you, again, you confine yourself to certain disciplines and you facilitate them daily. And even though they seem so monotonous and sometimes it seems like you're on autopilot, yes, that doesn't mean that those disciplines are not working for the greater good in the big picture because they are. The other one, number three, relationships. And I don't mean just with your spouse or with your, with your brother or with your friends. I mean everybody. Every communication or conversation that you have with people, whether it's a Starbucks barista or it's your server at the restaurant or it's just a passerby that stops you and says, hey, I like your shoes, man. Every conversation matters. And it's when you think you're above those simple, seemingly meaningless conversations that you're actually starting to decay. You're never above that. That's the interaction. That's human interaction at its finest, really. And those things should never be discounted. Understanding your place on this planet no matter what happens to you, no matter what God blesses you with, will never, will never 
take the place of you being human and you being a human first. And even though you're having bad days, you're going through certain trials and you don't really feel like being nice or conversational or appealing, or I'm sorry, appeasing to somebody. Look, man, I get it. And if you, for some reason, fumble in that conversation or whatever, it's always best that you can, you can understand where you went wrong. And the great news is you can make it right with God. You can make it right with that person. Expressing yourself is not a bad thing. And admitting where you're wrong is not a bad thing. But also, when you're not wrong, not abdicating from that position, they are tethered. Just because what your truth is may not sit well with somebody else does not mean that you, sub that you subjugate yourself to that particular person or circumstance. That's not noble. Really, these three are paramount and they're what you should live your life by daily and what you should use to navigate you daily. These are the lessons that you can take in your day, every single day. And really, these are the refiners to your entire existence. I remember about eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, somewhere in that bracket. I remember my dad would always go out in the garage and lift weights. And I may have talked about this in the previous podcast, like, a long time ago, but it deserves to be revisited. Like I once stated in the beginning of the podcast, I remember watching him with weights and he lifted what seemed like a lot of weight to me. And it is, I mean, I, I lift weights now. I still know it was a lot of weight. In fact, it's more than I bench press current day, <laughs> but I remember seeing him lift these weights and I remember and how big he was. And I remember thinking, and this is a legitimate thought. How will I ever be the man that he is? I remember thinking that at age nine or 10. And I mean, I mean, why would that even be a thought at that young of an age? And the only, the only explanation is that it's implicit in my DNA, my biological wiring to become a man and to have questions centered around what it takes to become that man. And that's the only thing, that's the only presupposition that I can compose. So when that, when that was, happening when I was thinking that and I remember seeing him lift these big strong weights and I just remember thinking how am I ever gonna achieve that and then and then even just achieve that and I remember then flashing over to how I thought of myself and how I would be as an adult and I remember thinking being petrified of being just a, a skinny frail adult and this is what I'm thinking at age nine now, if you were to ask me at age nine, you know, where do you think this is going to go? That's what I would have told you. I think, I think I'm going to be, uh, I mean, I can't see myself even coming close to my dad. So I, I thought, I'm, I hope, I hope not, but I'm probably going to be this like skinny, like weak adult. And that was a fear of mine. <laughs> And, and maybe you're thinking, well, maybe that's the reason why you started lifting weights, but it's not. I just started lifting weights 
because of other things. I mean, I was severely underweight and then I ended up finding weightlifting because it was provoked by not only a good friend of mine at the time, but also my mother. And, um, you know, then it's, then it manifested into what it is. And that's a long story. We're not going to get into that, but I never thought that I would be this type of a, of a, of a, an adult. And the point is, you don't know where this is going, but you can do one thing about it. You can keep going. You don't know what anything looks like. And that may be your naivete, but that is actually a gift handed to you. Because if you did know where this was going, you would mess this up. And so even though you want to know so bad, even though I want to know so bad what I'm going to look like or, or be producing like when I'm 40 or, or next year, rather, I'm glad that I don't have the plan. I'm glad that my God bears and knows the plan. And the proof of that, that plan, that it exists for my good, is that I'm still waking up every single day thus far. So look, I have to trust not only with what I believe implicitly at the core of me, not only why I've, I've developed these disciplines and routines centered around what I want to, I really want to become or I really what I think I'm going to become or what I think I'm being led to and adhering to such a process and a pursuit every day, even though in the process, it seems very dry and like nothing seems to be happening. And even if something did happen, how would it happen? I mean, geez, how is this going to pull through? You may be thinking the same thing. What we need to remember is A, we don't have the plan and B, it's in our best interest to just stop thinking about it and just continuously do. And I don't mean do and be comfortable doing. I mean, do with the, with the consensus that this is going somewhere. And because you're not, because you're doing something that, that really is causing you grief and, and questionnaires to arise every day, that is directly correlating to the fact that you're not comfortable. Because let me tell you what comfortability is. Adopting and fostering a job or a, or a position in your life that's really causing you to not think and it's just doing. And that's not the same as creating your own disciplines and your own routines because if you've ever done that, you know that you go against your own disciplines, your own routines, you, you're combative with those certain things in your life because there's something that's man manufactured by you. And it's not something that you need to adhere to. And sometimes you think you're going crazy. At least I do. Because I'm like, how, why am I doing this? Why do I do this? I know at the core of me why I do this. And it's because I believe something better is on the other end waiting for me. And just me saying that right now gives me goosebumps. Because... Even though I can't see it. And I don't know when it's going to happen. Or I don't know what. I don't know what's going to start the process. In terms of it manifesting and growing as something. Maybe it already be ha Maybe it's already happening. And it's, it's happening unbeknownst to me. But I know this. And I believe in this. And, I'm in, and I consistently tell myself this every single day. And I think you should too. God, I know you're orchestrating great things on my behalf right now. I know you're orchestrating and providing specific people to come into my life 
that are going to be not only a blessing from you, but that are going to give me opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise. That's the anchor that I really allow myself to be drowned in every single day. I allow that anchor to pull me to the deep depths of the ocean floor every single day. That's what I hold on to. And sometimes the beauty in the process and the pursuit is being blindfolded and not knowing where you're going. All the while, you know that with each pressing day, you've given it your all, you've covered all your bases, and you're setting in these disciplines and routines because they're all you know and they're what's going to make you better and they're what's going to propel you into new trajectories that's going to be your life's calling. Done.